The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechGig webinar series, Our Endeavor to Empower Techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. And the topic of today's session is Microsoft Offering on Big Data. Our guest speaker today is Sudhil Kumar Chakrapani. He is a Support Escalation Engineer at Microsoft Corporation India Private Limited. Sunil has been working with Microsoft support for more than eight years and is passionate about helping customers in using Microsoft technologies to bring out their full potential. Working in HD Insight support team, he actively helps customers in realizing data to Insight concept. With 12 years of experience in technology, Sunil has worked on most of the developer technologies introduced by Microsoft. He is excited being part of the Microsoft Big Data team for the potential the technology holds. Sunil is Microsoft Certified Solution Associate. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you Sunil. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Arvan. So yep, uh, as other, that was a very good introduction. So let me just start off the session. Okay, um, in this session, I will introduce you to HD Insight, first of all, and a very high level understanding of storage architecture, how HD Insight uses the underlying Windows Azure storage blobs, and um, also give an introduction how you can create uh, clusters using various ways, uh, be it PowerShell, uh, .NET SDK, or from the manage management portal. In fact, the management portal is very helpful and it's um, it's very user friendly. Okay, so I my always my best choice is to use the management portal. But I will also introduce you to how you can create uh, HD Insight clusters from PowerShell and .NET SDK. Okay, and I will start off with uh, what is Microsoft offering for big data. And I will not. I, most of you would already aware of what is big data as such. So I will not discuss much about big data. Rather, I will start off how what is offerings from Microsoft and then get on to storage and then we will have a couple of demos okay and do hold on to the end of the session because there is a, a full-fledged I have tried to cover up an end-to-end -end demo using Hive, Storage Blob, PowerShell, Excel and we will also view the sentiment analysis using uh, Excel Power View and Maps okay so um, in fact, um, Microsoft is uh, the Microsoft Big Data offering is not a new uh, to Microsoft as such. Okay, um, it's been Microsoft has been analyzing uh, Bing data about you know hundred petabytes of data, and which has been delivering high quality search results as such. Okay, so organizations uh, use big data solutions to unleash actionable insights. Okay, uh, in fact, if you can see. Uh, we have the entire stack aligned. Now, um, one of the best piece I would like to highlight when it comes to HD Insight per se is if you have anything cloud-born, let us say you have a website which generates huge log files. Okay, one of the best features or one of the best offerings within Microsoft Azure is you can host your websites on Azure, collect the logs on blob storage and analyze it on HD Insight. So what I have, I have tried to highlight here is you have the end, the entire end-to-end -end stack which is available with Microsoft that you can avail or you can make use into your enterprise and gather insights from it. Like let us say you have unstructured or structured data, you can use you can use any of the offerings. We have two offerings in here. One is the HD Insight service. When we talk about HD Insight service, it's nothing but Hadoop on Azure. And um, we also introduced analytical platform system. Now, this was earlier PDW, parallel data warehouse. Now, uh, we also have uh, another region added to PDW, wherein you can have SQL Server as well as Hadoop sitting side by side. And uh, an awesome 
isotope technology has been used wherein you can query the data which is lying or which has been stored in your Hadoop. You can also uh, query that from your SQL Server and vice versa. So uh, we have a very good offering uh, from PDW as well as formerly it was PDW. Now the PDW and HD, uh, Hadoop region has both been put into one appliance which is nothing but analytical platform system and all these you can have any data that you store in your storage blob you can make use from your Hadoop uh, or your HD insight draw insights from them and you can use analysis services and SSR, SSRS services for both reporting as well as analysis and then we have as most of you are familiar and most of the enterprise is familiar which is not new you have an entire insight stack like your power view excel with power pivot tool predictive analysis and embedded so you have quite many end user tools as well okay as i mentioned this had been we have been using this but now we have an introduction to hadoop which is quite much an open source which has been quite popular these days so we have introduced or we have brought in our open source stack also in between and we are making use of the entire stack that already which has been tried and tested okay and one of the primary things that I would like you to take away from this slide is cloudborne anything that you have like you can host your websites on Azure pull the data populate into a Windows Azure storage blob and when you are ready to analyze you can spawn the clusters but this slide is more often what we are as Microsoft what is a big data solution that we are here to offer Now, um, as such, Windows Azure storage services, it's nothing but Hadoop on Windows Azure, okay? So, uh, we are, most of you would have already been familiar with Hadoop, uh, which is an, and again, uh, this is a 100% Apache solution, which is on cloud, okay? Uh, we don't, or there is no much change, and whatever changes that we have done, it is contributed uh, back to the community. It is not that we have picked up everything from the open source uh, community, rather we have contributed enough to the community as well. Okay, so um, Azure, which is 100%, uh, Azure HD Insight, which is an 100% Apache compatible Hadoop distribution, uh, which is available for Windows Azure. Uh, instead of, you know, uh, primarily instead of building everything from the scratch, okay, uh, we have built our own Hadoop distribution. In fact, Microsoft chose to partner with Hortonworks data platform and which uh, Hortonworks in fact ported the entire Apache Hadoop to Windows platform. In fact, uh, it's about 6,000 plus engineer hours and about 25,000, uh, approximately 25,000 25, lines of code has been uh, contributed to this uh, Apache project. Okay. So, yeah. So, now, how is it been built on what is that we have with Windows Azure HD Insight service is primarily it's your Hadoop plus we have the entire Hadoop cluster on Azure and the entire Azure, the data that gets stored uses blob storage. Okay, finally we have our entire BI stack. This is how your Windows Azure HD Insight service looks like. Okay, it's Apache 100% Apache Hadoop that we have, and um, the entire cluster uh, you, you can spawn in in number of clusters as much as you need in no time. Okay, which I will also demonstrate. And in turn, we will be using blob storage. Okay, and the entire BI stack. In in fact, uh, cloud storage is one of the core elements of Azure offering. Okay, and it plays a major role in any other Azure services as you use, okay? As I had mentioned, like, you can also save your logs or any other data into this blob storage, okay? And it is, um, it offers a very handy and a cheap or a, a cheap way to persist your content, and it, uh, you can make it available across the web, okay? And Windows Azure stores the data or binary data or it blobs in containers. So I will also try to explain what is a blob storage and account storage and then a container. Okay. 
Now, uh, the first slide, the previous slides were about more of an offering, and here is about how you can deploy. Okay, in, uh, you can how you can deploy this in your en uh, environment. Uh, the first offering that uh, we are very much, uh, uh, which I would like to highlight is your Windows Azure HD Insight. Okay, and this is the fastest way in which you can start spin any of your clusters. Okay, I will demonstrate how quickly you can just spawn clusters, and then even you can add more clusters as and when you need. Okay, um, and then the second piece, which I've already introduced to you, uh, is your Microsoft Analytical Platform System. Okay, which has been introduced a couple of months back, and you can have uh, you have the PDW version 2.0 appliance update with this you also can you can you can also have you can also have a big data solution combined with your PDW okay now um, in fact it has got the poly as I mentioned it, it has got polybase wherein you can have your SQL server as well as your Hadoop offering both sitting on the same appliance okay and this is an on-prem offering like your Windows Azure HD Insight is a cloud offering where Maps is an on-prem offering and you can also have your Hortonworks data platform for Windows. This is not primarily from Microsoft per se. Rather, Hortonworks has got a download and you can install these clusters, but you have to manually go and install. You can set, you need to set up the head nodes or the name nodes, and you have uh, to do quite much work in this case. But still, you can also install your Hortonworks data platform directly on your uh, Windows OS as well. Okay, and even uh, this. HTTP or Hortonworks data platform is 100% enterprise ready, so you can go ahead and use this. Okay, but uh, if you if you go back and review you, the way in which we offer Azure and then Hortonworks data platform, we make use of Hortonworks data platform on Windows uh, Windows, and then we offer the same thing. It's package the entire Hortonworks data platform is packed on our Windows Azure offering as such. Now, let me quickly show the current versions that we offer. Okay, now um, HD Insight comes in four flavors. You have 3.1, which is preview, uh, it's still in preview, and 3.0. Whenever you create a cluster, and if you don't mention the version that you, the version of the cluster, by default it will create a 3.0 HD Insight cluster, and 2.1 at 1.6. So uh, you can see parallelly the versions that Hortonworks data, data platform or HTTP offers. So with 3.0 HD Insight, you get Hortonworks data platform 2.0. Okay, and then Hortonworks has backed Apache Hadoop 2.2 in its um, Hortonworks data platform 2.0 version. So all in all, if you are looking for Hadoop 2.2 offering then you need to select you need to create a cluster of HD Insight 3.0. If you are looking for Hadoop 2.4 then HD Insight 3.1 which is still in preview. You can uh, you can create a cluster of 3.1 if you are looking for Hadoop 2.4. And this is just to map how Hadoop has been packed by Hortonworks and how we ship Hortonworks data platform onto HD Insight. Now So uh, before I get into this HD Insight cluster architecture, I would like to highlight one of the very crux of this map reduce. Per se is you have data nodes within the data and the code that executes on over the data resides on the same machines. Or or else your job tracker sends a piece of code to the task, the task tracker to or to execute on the data nodes. But if you see from this architecture your entire data will be stored on Windows Azure storage blob. It's just, you can consider it to be a one hard disk or one location where your, your entire data is stored. And the second layer, the next layer, or the worker nodes or the data nodes, or you are, these are your VMs, okay? And then in front of them you have your head node, and then the secure node that we have introduced for security. So um, the secure role is primarily not an Apache Hadoop offering, rather we have introduced the secure role in front of this head node. Now going back, 
uh, what I was uh, trying to highlight was your job tracker picks up a piece of code, uh, hands it over the task tracker, and the task tracker task tracker runs this code or executes this code against the data that is residing locally on its machine. But in here, you have the data in one location, and then your nodes, your data nodes, whenever it requires, it goes back to the Windows Azure Storage Box, picks up certain data and carries carries it over to the data node and it executes the job against the data and then it, it the map reduce job is completed so what i would like to highlight here is that your data travels from your windows azure storage blob back to the data node this is sort of it uh, goes against the principles of map reduce but still if you go by the map reduce shuffles phase it so happens it's only the first initial request that it does for the data is the only time when the data travels from the uh, Windows Visual Storage blob to the data node. And the next stage, it's all similar to what used to happen with your MapReduce. But in the shuffle phase, yes, it has to, anyway, even in your Apache Hadoop, your data will shuffle between the nodes. The same thing will happen happens here. So the data goes, uh, it crosses the network. So only the first retrieval, wherein it goes back, it goes to the Windows Azure Storage Blob and pulls the data. That is only delay, and in fact, that delay has been mitigated very well with the network layer that has been introduced. It is called Azure Flat Network Storage. So uh, a network layer has been introduced between your data node and the Windows Azure Storage Blob, so that you will not even see the initial lag or delay. Okay, so it, it is almost. Uh, you will have the same experience as the data residing on the data nodes. That is the first phase. So um, another thing that I would like to highlight here is uh, if you go back to your Windows Azure Store, if you go back to your Apache Hadoop, you have a replication factor wherein data will be replicated twice or thrice, okay, depending on the, by default it is thrice, depending on the configuration that you have set. So it has to replicate a data thrice. In that case, you are in fact, uh, you need to have the storage as well as the data node, both twice. It is almost like uh, you, you are replicating, if you are replicating thrice, you need three machines to store the same number of uh, data or the same amount of data. Rather here, it so happens, you store all the data in only one storage. It is your Windows Azure Storage Block. The replication is taken care behind the scene and you don't have to pay for it. Rather, all you do is you just use your Windows Azure Storage Blob, store the data. You don't even have to spawn the cluster. Go ahead, store the data. If you're not even sure that if you can make insight or not, or you're just saving it for the future, go ahead and you don't even have to spawn the cluster. Don't pay for the cluster. Use the storage. Start populating the storage. And when you're ready to analyze the data, go ahead and spawn the clusters gather the insight and then kill the uh, clusters. Your data is still there and you have your all your insights, all, all your data back. You can just save it back into your storage block and you don't have to. You have to pay for the cluster only for the time that you have spawned, got your job done, and then you can delete it. Only between that uh, the time that you have spawned the cluster and deleting, that is the only time that you pay for the number of nodes as well as the head node as such. Per se, you will pay for the cluster only when it is being used. Not uh, and then at the another piece is you can just keep storing the data when you're ready. Go ahead and spawn the cluster. Okay. So um, all I would I would like to highlight in this is uh, you need to in get introduced to Windows Azure Storage Blob, which is a single storage and by default HD inside the default storage is Windows Azure Storage Blob per se. Okay. In fact, uh, it, uh, in fact, it's you can also. You can also. I will show how you can also make use of your HDFS. Okay, you can also go back to your cluster and you can access your HDFS and you can store the data locally on the data node as well. Okay, but if you need to take the advantage of uh, HD inside architecture as such, I would suggest that go ahead and use your Windows Azure Storage Blob. Okay, which has got much more uh, advantage than your HDFS. Okay, and few highlights here: the head node. Uh, is a it is an eight core, fourteen gig uh, machine, and it hosts your uh, name node, secondary name node, and then the job tracker. 
apart from that it also hosts your uh, hive server pig scoop and your meta store okay and your derby server all these gets into the head node okay and the worker nodes the worker nodes are also um, azure large vms and they are four cores 7 gb of ram okay and the worker nodes uh, run task tracker data node and then your big hive clients and things like that Okay, um, as I mentioned, this session is more of highlight about HD inside cluster and storage uh, per se. So, um, your Windows Azure HD inside support both HDFS as well as your Windows Azure storage for storing your data. And uh, the blob storage is there of use, it's a general purpose Windows Azure storage solution. And it, it uh, supports or provides a full featured HDFS interface. Okay. Uh, you will not uh, find any difference between your HDFS as well as with your Windows Azure Storage Blob project. Okay, and uh, it is a, a low-cost solution. It enables all the clusters to use. Uh, it, it enables all the. It, you can you can have multiple clusters pointing to the same storage and the container. Okay, so. Um, during the course of this, I will explain you how, how the storage and the container can be segregated. So you can uh, start segregating. You can have only one storage blob and segregate data within containers. Okay, and as I mentioned, this is the default file system. Uh, Windows, Windows Azure Storage Blob is a default file system. It, um, it is shareable. When I say shareable, you can have multiple clusters. When I say multiple clusters, you can have different HD inside clusters pointing to the same storage blob. And it is highly scalable. Uh, as I mentioned, you, you don't have to replicate the data on your own. It is done backend. It, you can also have a geolocation enabled so that it stores the data in multiple locations as well. So uh, you can, uh, there are quite many advantages, like first thing is you don't even, even if you are not aware that you, you might uh, know if you can, if you can make any insight of your data, you can just go ahead and uh, store your data and, and understand what all data that you are storing and based on that you can gather insights as well, okay. So um, storage as such doesn't provide compute, rather you need to attach the storage to another compute node to get your insight. So you can um, have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, network layers, make sure that uh, whenever you create, create a cluster, you should make sure that your data and the compute node are on the same location so that uh, it can make use of the network and have a fast uh, availability okay, of the data. No. Um, so, how do you access your storage blob? So, uh, your Windows Azure storage blob is segregated with a container and an account. Okay. Um, you can, and it is. If you look into your configuration, your HD inside configuration, you will find an fs dot azure dot account dot key dot account name, wherein you need to specify what storage account is the default uh, storage for the clusters. Okay, uh, just um, I will show you when, uh, whenever I, within the PowerShell, I will be using this Windows Azure Storage Blob colon container at account. Uh, so um, I will show you in a demo how you can use this container. Okay. Now, uh, within HD Insight, as such, within your ex existing ecosystem. Uh, you have high big mahout scoop uzi hbase hbase was introduced recently okay and you have quite many options uh, in which you can create clusters or manage your hd inside clusters as such you can you, you can call a map you can create map reduce jobs using c sharp you can use hd inside streaming and you can uh, create map reduce jobs using c sharp and also uh, i will demonstrate uh, powershell how you can create clusters as well as execute how a high it varies from within your PowerShell console. Okay. 
now. Okay, it is demo time. Yes. So um, let us switch over. Okay. This is my uh, Azure management portal. Okay. In fact, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is a very user-friendly portal. And I will primarily concentrate and or switch between HP Insight and Storage Blob. Okay. So you can see I have four clusters already created. And I have quite many storage blobs. And let us look into this HP Insight cluster and how do I create a cluster? You can go to new HP Insight. You have two options, either quick create or custom create. Okay, um, when you have quick create, you can just say a cluster name, how many data nodes that you need, and the password. As I mentioned, you can use the same Windows Azure storage blob, or you can have the Windows Azure storage blob shared across multiple HD inside clusters. So it, uh, it is pointing like if you need to use, if you want to use a a new cluster, storage cluster, or you can new uh, storage blob. Or you want to create an old one. You can use a make, make use of an old one. So I will go with a custom create here. This is more detailed. Let's say test zero one. Let me see. Most of the time, test test names would have been taken. So I'll create a two node cluster. Okay, and uh, this cluster size depends on the subscription that you hold, okay? I guess I have some 24 or 27 node clusters that I can create, but at this point of time, I will just create two node cluster, and in the drop-down, as I had already mentioned, we have 1.6, 2.1, 3.0, and 3.1 cluster, and it also highlights what version of Hadoop or Apache Hadoop that is shipped with the version. And I will usually I select Southeast Asia so that it's nearer to me. Okay, that is the region. And I'll just create a user. In fact, I can also uh, very easily make sure. Uh, enable Hive meta stores to be st saved in a SQL server, okay? Even that is possible when I'm creating a cluster. So um, I can use an existing uh, storage or create a new storage. I'll create a new one. As I mentioned, I can specify an account, storage account, okay? I will say KC test in this case, okay, zero, 01. Okay, so I'm specifying an account name for the storage and the default storage is depending on how you want to store the data. Uh, let us say uh, this is more about inventory that you're going to store the data or if it is something related to websites that you're going to store the data, you can specify the con uh, container as such, okay? Okay, this doesn't take uppercase. So. No, you can also add additional storage to this, but I will uh, pick up the first one. So this cluster will have a default Windows Azure storage blob configured as KC test and the container will be website one. Okay, I can create another cluster, make use of the same account but point to a different container. So it's creating, uh, this is how you create. As I mentioned, you have two options to create, uh, quick create as well as and, uh, custom create. This is for management portal. Let us, while it is still creating the cluster, let us go to our okay. Now, what I have done is, if you can see, rather than creating multiple clusters, I created this demo, tweet demo cluster around 11 or 12 in the afternoon. Okay, so I kept it um, open so that because creating a cluster takes quite much time. It takes about 20 minutes. You will see from our management portal how long it takes. So uh, what I had done is I had created a cluster in the morning, and I will just try to explain the code that I have used here. Okay. 
So um, let me switch to this guy. Okay. Yeah. Now you have two things: your storage account and location. This piece, the top piece, is just to create a storage account. If you, I have switched back to the portal. Okay, um, I think it's past that session. Like even within your portal, as soon as your cluster is provisioned, when you start provisioning your cluster or when you create a cluster, it first creates a storage. Let us see if the storage has been created. Not it. Okay. So you will see case it as zero one storage getting created here. So now why am I pointing here is all I'm trying to highlight here is the first thing that you need to know is whenever you are creating a cluster, where am I going to store the data and how am I going to consume the data? Okay, primarily you are going to analyze your data, that is why you're spawning a cluster. So first thing is I have an idea or have a plan to create a cluster and point to the right storage. Okay, in here I have mentioned okay, I'm on a storage account with case HD05 and where do I need to create the storage is South Asia and this piece will create the storage and next as I mentioned every storage can have a container container is nothing but you can consider it to be a folder within your account okay you can uh, consider your storage account as the root folder and this is you uh, the folder is not actually a synonym or replaceable with a account name. No, this is just for your understanding. I'm trying to explain that a storage account is like a root folder, and the containers can be as a your containers can be a, a, a folder uh, underneath your root folder. Okay, wherein you can start adding your data. Why am I saying that it is not a root folder? Is the entire data is stored in key value pairs. Okay, the more details. Uh, is not within the scope of this session, but uh, what I can highlight here is that entire data is stored as a key value pair. So, in that sense, a storage account is not a folder. Rather, uh, your container and a folder it will act like a folder and a subfolder. Okay, it's not synonym. That is what I would like to highlight here. They are not replaceable. Now, um, the second piece is your container. Okay, I am creating a container with the same name as a storage account here. This piece creates a container okay create a for, uh, storage account create a cluster for that container or a uh, create a uh, container for that account name and then the, finally you use new HD inside cluster this is the command a commercial command to create a cluster if you see new Azure storage account and new Azure storage container these are part of Azure modules. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Uh, give me a minute here. So, all these, all all the names or a command lets pertaining to Microsoft Windows Azure management and HD inside command let these are the commands that are required to create HD inside cluster but if you see the first two commands the new storage account and the new storage container these are part of Azure so the you have a module name called Azure as well as Microsoft.WindowsAzure.Management.HD inside the command let these are two different modules, okay? But you need to have have an understanding of both these modules. So whenever you are creating a storage, you need Azure module. Whenever you are creating a cluster which makes use of the storage, you create you, you call uh, Azure HD inside. So this command creates a cluster, okay? Let us try this. So this will create a, this command should create a two node cluster for us. Okay. Okay. Let it continue. So the first piece was from your portal. The second piece is from your uh, second uh, demo is from the PowerShell. And uh, third one is you can also create your clusters from .NET. Okay. 
So this command list, if you can see this guy, um, I have uh, in here, you have something called HT inside, SDK, Hadoop SDK, as such, okay. So uh, this is part of CodePlex, uh, you, uh, we call it as Microsoft.NET SDK for Hadoop. So I have used this package within this SDK, within this application, and okay, this is prompting me if you remember from my portal, I had created, I had mentioned, I had given a username and password. This is prompting me for the username and password. This is from the PowerShell command, okay? So, now let us go back to our Visual Studio. So, um, as I mentioned, within this Visual Studio, I have made use of Microsoft.NET SDK for help. And then, um, there are quite many namespaces that you might need. First thing is, we had seen the same namespace from your PowerShell as well. It's the same namespace, and then uh, you have Microsoft.Hadoop. All of them will be all of them will be under Microsoft.Hadoop. Okay, and here I'm listing out the cluster. We make use of certificates when we are accessing the cluster from Microsoft.NET SDK. Okay, now how will you install and from where do you get the certificates? So if you go to your okay, so you can download certificates to authenticate users. Now these are some of the features within which comes which is shipped out of the box when you pick up HD inset services. Okay, sort of you have a initial initial security is taken care. Okay, and also your storage and certain things are set there. But in what I would like to highlight here is you can download certificates on any other client and make use of the certificates to authenticate yourself and get access to the clusters. Okay, in here I have downloaded a certificate and I am listing out the cluster. Okay, let me comment the create cluster for now. I am listing out the clusters. from my HD inside account. Okay. Now if you can see our KC test 01 has been completed and we have about six clusters. Even the KC HDI 06 which I launched from my PowerShell is also getting listed. And if you can see the storage is yet to be provisioned, but you can see from my .NET SDK when I ran list clusters, list of the clusters, I was able to see all the six clusters. Okay, now, not to confuse you, just to revisit everything, I created a cluster from my portal, okay, and these two clusters, one KC test was from the portal, and KC HD I06 was from PowerShell. The third feature that I would like to highlight is how you can create a cluster from .NET as such, okay. So again, the first piece is to authenticate the client. Okay, so you can consume this certificate. Any uh, any client which can consume this certificate and authenticate against the certificate. And then, uh, if you can see, the code to create a cluster is as simple as this. Okay, so um, in here, I have uh, I have created a HT inside client which says connect, and then cluster create parameters. All you need to do is specify is the name. You already have, you are already aware of the location where you want to create this cluster. What is a storage account that this cluster needs to use? What is account key? So now to talk about account key, every storage as it is that as it resides on on the cloud, you also need to supply a storage account key to authenticate against this storage account. Okay, storage account is the actual storage or the entity wherein you store the data to okay, authenticate against this storage account, you will have an account key. Now, where will you fetch this account key? You can go to your storage and you can select any one of those storages and you can click on this manage access. Okay, When you click on manage access key, it will show the account key. Okay, So you cannot use the same account key here because after this session I will go and click on regenerate. So even if you try to access this or take a screenshot or try to access this, you will not be able to. 
okay uh, so it is pretty much secure enough okay so you make use of this account key to get access to the storage account and then within this what container every storage account is a root folder underneath it is a, is a container okay so uh, disclaimer again this is just to make your understanding easier and uh, every now every every time you create a cluster you need to provide an admin username and password so you have username and password that you provide and then the size of the cluster that you want to create you can just say 2 4 10 or depending on the size of the data that you need you can go and spawn the cluster and to create a cluster all you have to do is this so if you have already created a cluster on Linux or on HTTP, you will certainly appreciate the simplicity in which you can create clusters from .NET Framework and such, or from the PowerShell. Okay, so I myself uh, a year back when I started, I myself have created clusters on HTTP and have struggled enough. It took maybe a couple of days, not even hours. It took a couple of days to understand the cluster properties and things like that, and to spawn maybe four or five initially when I started. Now you don't have to do, you don't have to struggle much. If you have a uh, Windows Azure account, you can easily create a cluster without much pain. And go ahead with what is your ultimate goal of analyzing your data rather than struggling with creating your clusters. Okay, uh, so uh, let us go ahead and create cluster from .NET Asset. Okay, let this run. So if you can see the KC test was from portal, this is from PowerShell and automated HDA, HDA cluster is from my .NET framework. Okay, So you have all three different ways in which you can create a cluster. Now while this is creating a cluster, I will just walk you through a very simple demo. I will just take a 5 to 10 minutes to actually show an end to end demo as well why the cluster clusters have been created. So, I have a, in this demo, I have already uploaded a Twitter data and the Twitter data looks like this. Okay, The raw tweets, this is for a movie that I picked up and I have picked up a Robocop movie uh, Twitter uh, data which was gathered quite some time back. So I just wanted to keep the time, I just wanted to create it very quickly so I have picked up this demo as such. So this is a Twitter data. Let me first execute and I'll explain what, what this does. Okay. Now, I'm executing Hive queries. I have already stored the data. I will show you where the data resides. Thanks for that in a short while. I'm trying to open a new PowerShell ISC. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is as I had mentioned, I had I have stored the Twitter data under this storage account, HDI storage 03 blob.co.windows.net. Okay. Now I am running this high query against this tweet, tweet demo. Okay. Let me go, go back to the cluster. I am selecting tweet demo. And this tweet demo cluster uses HDI storage. Okay, HDI storage. I will, I'm clicking on this HDI storage. If you can see right now, the tab has been shifted to storage. And within this HDI storage, I have demo files. Okay. Within these demo files, I have this tweets to BI. 
HQL Hive query. Okay, no. What am I trying to highlight here is the syntax in which I have accessed this Windows Azure storage blob. Windows Azure storage blob slash demo files, which is a container under this HDI storage 03 uh, account. Okay, so under this HDI uh, storage 03, you can have n number of containers, and any any storage can any uh, cluster can make use of these containers. So what I mean to say is, you can have n number of clusters pointing to the same Windows Azure storage block. Okay. Now I have executed this Hive query. Let us look at the status. So all these Hive queries, all it did was, it picked up this Hive, uh, it picked up this tweet data. Okay, and it splits this tweet data. Okay, and how did it split the tweet data? Is I'm using a a survey here, okay, a JSON survey to uh, split the data, and each and every tweet will be something like this, an entire sentence, and for each and every tweet, in level one, I'm splitting them, I'm busting them into words. From there on, for individual tweet, I'm uh, again splitting them, and after splitting them, based on the dictionary, I'm setting them to one or zero for every word. If if it is beautiful, if it is, if, look, let us say uh, somebody has mentioned it beautiful. In that case, I have set it to one. And uh, if it is a negative sentiment, like the movie is bad, in that case, bad will get a minus one. So I have a dictionary which I also configured. So with these two, I have uh, aligned the tables and set individual words with one, minus one, and zero. Okay? So for positive one, uh, for neutral, it is zero. and for uh, negative it is minus one. So I have set all these three. And another piece I will I want to show you here is high editor. Whenever you create a cluster, whenever you create a cluster, if you can see the cluster that we are running this demo is under is a tweet demo. Under this tweet demo you have management cluster. Manage cluster. When you click this manage cluster, it opens up a Hive editor, okay. So what what I'll do is I'll just execute this Hive queries here, which picks up those individual words, okay, and creates a positive or a negative polarity. For each and every positive and a negative polarity, I'm assigning in the next one I'm assigning a zero, one, or minus one. Okay, let's submit this. Okay. So once this completes, we will have a tweets BI table. Now, we have, we created a cluster and we also stored our data in Windows Visual Storage Blob. We are running the high query from a power shell. We can also execute your high queries from manage our cluster dashboard. Okay, you can either choose one of them. Okay, it's not that you need to follow the same thing that I'm doing. I'm just trying to highlight all the features that are available within each site. Okay, so you can use PowerShell or you can use your Hive uh, editor. You can just go ahead and use your cluster dashboard to execute your Hive queries, and you can very clearly see that status it is still running. Okay, now the last piece that I would like to show here is once this tweets BI is created, you can also access this tweets BI. From Excel. So, Excel provides you a Hive OEPC driver. Okay. So um, I will go ahead and connect to the already existing one because right now the clusters are still being. I think the query is still executing. It is still running. Okay, so what we'll do is to save time. I will go ahead and connect to an existing cluster which has got the data that we are looking for. So this will take a few minutes to go ahead and pull the data. Okay, so as you can see, our tweets behind. This is the same table that I was trying to create from my Hive or cluster dashboard. 
Okay, I hope you were able to just get a glimpse of this. So you have tweets bi. This tweets bi is nothing but a hive table. Okay, and I'm I'll pick up country and then sentiments. If it's moving too quickly, all I'm doing is click next until finish. Let's give it some time. Okay. The case it is zero one cluster that we created from management portal is done. Okay, now. So now it's pulling the data from the from high Hive tables. Okay, it's taking it's much time, some time here. So I will go ahead and show this from an existing. Okay, that's bad. Okay, let us wait for. Yes, that's good. So. I'm using power view here. I went to insert power view. And here is the data that got populated. And I am selecting maps on the top left. Okay. was bad. It crashed for some time for some reason. was my final demo about how you can use power view and maps I want to show you how you can pull the data okay let me try one last time okay I'm going to data from other sources So it's connecting to the clusters and it, uh, it will pull all the hive data from the tables that we we, have, we are selecting. Okay, it goes to, these are hive tables that are stored on the cluster and it uses Simba drivers to connect to the hive tables. Okay, let me finish this. Okay, in the meantime, I'm checking on my management portal if, if the clusters got created. Okay, uh, the test, KC test was from management portal. 06 was from my PowerShell and the automated HDI cluster which I created from my .NET is still getting created. In the meantime, from Excel sheet, um, I'm pulling the data from the hive tables. Okay. Now this is to uh, show how you can uh, connect your hive tables from an, uh, from an Excel sheet. Okay. 
and here let me go to insert power view I'll click on maps map okay came up you just sort this little add colors to it and then I will say sentiment count no black now if you can see from the tweets that we generated you can also uh, connect from your Excel you can also connect your high high tables and then display or show the insights the way you want to so from this uh, you can easily make out minus one is a negative uh, sentiment and then one is a positive or orange is positive one so uh, here it displays from this color uh, clarified map you can easily make certain decisions where you need to target if it's a product that you are targeting and somebody is not happy with it you can check out within this region why the product has not been up to your mark or why people are not satisfied with your product from this region as such okay so uh, with this session I believe I was able to show you how in various uh, different ways you can create cluster and how easy it is to create a cluster. In fact, while we were talking about an R, we created two clusters and the third one is getting created and each cluster had minimum of two different data nodes Okay, and all in a time of 20-30 minutes you were able to create uh, quite many clusters and you, even, even if the data nodes is more, it almost takes us, uh, takes us the same time. And another thing I would like, I wanted to highlight here is if you see the data storage, it is not connected to the clusters. Rather, the storage is altogether a different container wherein I had populated the data even before creating the cluster, and you can point the uh, storage account to the clusters that you are just just getting created. Okay, so uh, let me go, go back to my PPT here. So I I believe we were able to complete all the three demos quickly. So this is my final say. So we've been doing uh, big data for a very long time, and it is quite popular. And history insight uses blob storage. As you know, it's so much robust, and uh, it is very much compatible with your HDFS per se. And then PowerShell commands, HD insight helps to abstract the cluster creation. As you saw, it's much easy to create a PowerShell and HD insight. Uh, power, uh, your, it's quite easy to create HD inside cluster from PowerShell and then uh, your .NET SDK as such. Okay, and you can uh, you have an option to purchase exactly the capacity and performance that you need. You can go, you can uh, scale up as and when you need. Okay, so uh, if you uh, at this point of time you have very less data, you just need four node cluster. Go ahead with this. Stay happy as and when your business grows, you can add more data nodes and uh, proceed further from there. On. Okay. So um, this is my end of the session. Are there any questions? You can just post your questions if you have any. Thanks for the insightful presentation, Sunil. Um, due to time constraint, I have to request you to take a few questions right now, which you would be able to see in your questions tab. OK. Mm -hmm. And rest of the questions, there are a lot of questions coming in still. So I would share them okay. with you on offline. Okay, sure. Mm Are you able to see the questions coming in to you? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, first question is, let me check, okay, can we create clusters, okay, can, could we create cluster in only PowerShell and .NET SDK? Yes, you can create in PowerShell, .NET SDK as well as from the management portal. So you can use all these three options to create your clusters.
and is it possible to take data input as image documents like PDF videos yes uh, so even if you look into the data that we, I had passed uh, it was a JSON for it, it was in JSON format so you need to have a survey or a uh, serialized and deselection uh, component which can pass through your data and uh, whatever analysis that you want to do uh, it that parser should be able to gather that information and then uh, store it okay maybe use higher query to manage dot ebt data it's yes, absolutely you can you can parse the ebt data and store it into higher data high, higher tables okay uh, so again uh, the same thing applies even for dot ebt you should have a survey you should have a, a serialization a serializer or deserializer for your dot ebt files to parse the files as such and then you can from there once you have parsed the data you can save it into your hive uh, tables okay uh, so these are the three questions here and i guess there was one more how do i create a uh, cluster without providing credit card. <laughs> uh, I, I guess you can just by creating a uh, private subscription that should help you. Okay. Okay. So we have a lot of questions coming in, but uh, as the time we don't have much of time now. So I would request you yes. to, uh, if you can, sum up the session uh, right now. You can uh, do it. Okay. Sure. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it for me. I'd rather you can. All right. So I'm really thankful to our guest speaker today for conducting this wonderful webinar. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on techgig.com by tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Sunil, for taking the time out and having us. I hope you have a great evening ahead. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.